All right, so I know that editing modes are not the most interesting thing, but learning how to use them properly in On One Photo Raw will help you increase your workflow and get your photos edited a little bit better. So today we're gonna to take a look at all of the different features inside of the view modes in On One Photo Raw. So let's go. Welcome to Free Will Photos, where I help new photographers get their creative vision out into the world through teaching them how to use their gear and the software. If that's something you're interested in, go ahead and consider hitting the subscribe button. Now, if you find value in this video at all today, go ahead and hit the like button. It just helps YouTube share this video with more people that are also interested. If you haven't already, consider signing up for the newsletter. Just for signing up, you get free presets for On One Photo Raw. On top of that, You'll get all kinds of tips and tricks on how to use Photo Raw in ways that maybe you don't even consider using right now. Okay, so here we are inside of On One Photo Raw and we are on the browse module. Now, most of these view modes are going to be inside of the browse module. All right, now if you don't know what I'm talking about when I say view modes, if you come down here to the bottom left section of your on one photo raw module, you'll see these four, or I'm sorry, these five uh, squares. What these squares are, they're indicating where your, or which view mode you're in. Right now, I'm in the grid view mode. And the grid view mode is really great if I just want to look over all of my images and cull through them fairly quickly, but I'm not going to really be able to see any fine detail unless I double click and open this into edit or I can jump to another view mode. Now, when would you want to use the grid view mode? Anytime that you're comparing uh, images or just searching through images, this makes it extremely fast because you can scroll through and you can see a lot of images at one point. Uh, another reason why you would use the grid view mode is because you're looking at a sequence of images and you want to see if you have multiple images of the same thing like right here i have two waterfalls maybe i don't need both of these because they're very similar or i have two uh, images of this rock face that are about the same zoom and then the same concept here they're about the same focal length so maybe I only need one of those, all right? That's when you would wanna use the browse mode. Uh, and then you can also make selections for the rating and you can see some metadata here. But you also have a lot of access to that information over here on the right-hand side. So don't feel like you have to use what's up here. The next view mode that we're gonna go into is the detail view mode. Now. This view mode really allows you to zoom in and see what is going on in your image. All right. Now, I currently have my preview set at fast. What that means is as the uh, the raw image is being previewed, it's going to use the JPEG that's embedded inside of it. Now, when I double click on it and I move around, I'm starting to see exactly what's inside of the file. And that's why it had to load just a second ago. And then obviously I can just click and uh, get out of here. So when would you use the detail view? Obviously, anytime that you want to look at details inside of your image, all right? It comes with the zoom feature and you can really dive in and see where the critical focus is, which by the way, if you wanna see where the focus is in an image while you're looking at it in detail view, you can click on view and then come down here to show focus mask. All right, you can clip, or I'm sorry, you can click. And then anything that's in green, that means it's in focus. Uh, so if you're really trying to figure out, okay, where did I focus the camera or what portions of the image are in focus, this is how you can figure that out. Now, I personally don't like to look at this unless I'm like confused. Uh, so I turn it off most of the time and only turn it on when I really need to see that. The next view option is the film strip view. Now, this view is really, really handy when you want to have kind of the best of both worlds of the browse 
and the detail module, right? These things, they, they can definitely uh, work very well together. And this gives you an opportunity if you're looking at a sequence of images, like I can see this image here. And then if I wanna go down, it's like, oh no, I don't like the people there. Maybe my next image, oh, nope, okay. And then I can jump instead of having to see these three images in between this one and this one. And then it's like, okay, I finally found an image I like. I'll go ahead and give that a, a heart. And then if I wanna zoom in, I can zoom in and find the information it's gonna load and I can check the focus of the image. It's just a really good way of combining both the detail and the browse view modes. Now we're gonna get into the next view mode, which is the compare view mode. Now, I'll be honest, I don't use this as much. However, here's the power of the compare view mode. I can select an image and then I can hold down command and click on another image and it brings up both of these images side by side, all right? So on the right hand side here, I have the uh, selected image that's in blue and then on the left hand side, I have the other selected image. So if you wanna figure out which image you're comparing to, let's say I wanna compare this to this one, then click on the image down here, the thumbnail, you'll get a blue border around the, the selected image indicating that this one corresponds to this image up here. Here's the cool thing about the compare feature. You can do what's known as lock and zoom. That's down here in the bottom right hand corner where uh, if, the blue if the blue button is uh, filled in, then that means you're gonna be able to click inside of the image and it's going to zoom to the exact same spot or a very, uh, pretty much the exact same spot um, on both images. And then you can pan around inside of the image and look how the image moves around. So maybe you changed, uh, I don't think I have anywhere I changed my actual, I'm checking my metadata over here and looking to see if I changed my focal or I'm sorry, my f-stop, but I don't think I did on either one of these because I think the settings all stayed the same. Uh, but you could very easily click on these two things, see if the images match, and maybe you have, maybe I went down to a f5.6 instead of shooting at f9, or maybe I jumped up to f uh F18, I don't know, I, I don't think I would, but you know, whatever. If you changed your F-stop, uh, or maybe you just changed any, really, if you change anything in your exposure, this is a great way of comparing those images. Maybe you wanna compare uh, facial expressions, uh, maybe you wanna compare compositions. There's a lot of different things that you could want to compare and be able to zoom in and check the details of. Okay, now whenever you have a photo selected down here inside of the compare uh, view, you can either click the heart to like over the image in the thumbnail or the film strip, or you can click underneath the large viewing window to make any metadata changes. Um, I don't, again, I don't use this window too often, but if that's something that you're interested in, maybe it'll be worthwhile. All right, now the last one is kind of cool, all right? I really don't use this one at all, but I could see how someone may want to use this, okay? Uh, let me just select only one image. All right, this is the map view. The map view is really, really cool because if you are a landscape photographer, uh, you have an opportunity to come and get some metadata and put that into your image right here for the GPS, all right? So I know that these photos, they were taken at Shua, in Shuax Falls, probably not saying that right, but up here in the search window, I just typed in Shuex Falls. It brought me over here to 
the actual Shuex Falls, South Dakota area. If you right click over the blue icon and you can even zoom in a little bit further if you really, really want to get like specific as to where you took these images. Um, again, I don't really remember the exact location. I took these images like four years ago, but all I have to do is right click on anywhere on the map. We'll just say that it's right here and I can hit set click here to set location. Now, when I do this, pay attention to what happens in the GPS section. So I click there and look, it gives me the uh, north or the longitude latitude lines that give get to this location. So now I have GPS data built into my image metadata. This is really cool for landscape photographers. One of the ways that I would recommend using this tool is maybe you want to do some research on a location you want to go and photograph. So I'm going to zoom out here for a second and let's just say that I am in Wyoming. There we go. We'll say Wyoming, right? And I'm like, okay, I want to go do some landscape photography. I happen to be in this area. I want to see what's around me because I have no idea. You can click on satellite and you can start to see the topographical or the overlay of whatever is around you. And it's like, oh, well, this looks kind of interesting. I wonder what this is, All right? I've never been here before, but this is a pretty cool river. And it looks like there's a mountain that goes back over here, the Cooper Mountain Wilderness Study Area. So maybe there's some good areas over there Looks like there's a road that winds around in here. So then what you can do is say, OK, I want to go to one of these locations. You can get the uh, longitude latitude by, again, right clicking and then clicking uh, set location. It changes the information over there. Then what you can do is plug this into your Google Maps or whatever map system that you're using, and it'll navigate you to this location. Now, keep in mind, it looks like you're gonna have to do some sort of walking probably over here, uh, because I don't see any roads, but that's neither here nor there. Do your, your due diligence and research what it is that uh, you're gonna go out there and do. You know, Make sure that you can even get to this location, uh, but if you just have no idea because you're not from the area, this is a good way of searching around to see what's interesting for you. And maybe you'll find something that you really want to photograph. So the last thing that I want to show you in regards to view modes inside of on one photo raw is being able to create a quick slideshow. I'm going to select all these images and what I'm going to do is click on window quick slideshow. Now this feature is only available in on one photo raw 2021. If you want to try out on one photo raw, you can get a free trial by using the link in the description box below. If you come over to the quick slideshow, you can see you have a few options here to set the duration and then what type of transition. Now, here's what's cool about this slideshow. I can hit start slideshow and my images are going to pop up right here on screen and I'll move my cursor out of the way. And I can just look through these images in a very relaxing way. Now, this is great if you wanna share with a client. This is great if you wanna share with an individual. This is great if you just want to sit back and say, okay, what do my photos look like in a sequence? Now, if you are in the business of building slideshows for your clients, this is probably going to be a very, very helpful tool to see what it looks like when you actually make a slideshow of the images that you just got done editing. Because you may find that, oh, this doesn't look good. Uh, in a slideshow because the exposure, it, it just doesn't transition well or whatever. Before you even export the image, 
you can verify if it's going to look good in a slideshow. Now, to stop it, you just hit the escape key on your keyboard and it brings you back to the browse view. Now, again, this is only in on one photo raw 2021. And in order to use this feature, you do need to be inside of the grid view. Uh, you can probably do it inside of the film strip as long as you can select multiple images and then you can come up to window and you can hit the quick slideshow and start the your slideshow. All right. So that does it for today's video. I want to say thank you for watching and in the comment section below, let me know which view mode that you use the most often, or if you're excited about using the map view mode inside of on one photo raw to maybe map out your next landscape photography event or whatever it may be, or just being able to throw some GPS data into your photo. So until next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.